Hi, how's it going? It's Daiki. I'm a Japanese living and working here in Helsinki, Finland. Today I'm talking about my food culture shock in Finland. It's been already over four and a half years since I moved to Finland from Japan, and I thought it'd be nice to share my culture shock stories about food, since food is an important part of expat life and we can understand the country better through local food culture. Here are the main points I will go through today. We have reindeer meatball, potatoes, potatoes, and potatoes, salad dressing, saumiyaki, manmi, blood sausage called mustamakkara, and eating habit. I will timestamp those main points in the description below so that you can skip to the part you are interested in. Also, English subtitles are available. So, first topic is reindeer meatball. I had my first food culture shock already on my first day in Finland. After I arrived in Helsinki in 2016 and checked in a hotel, I decided to head for the market square since it's always a good way to check local markets to get local information first hand, such as local specialties, price ranges, people's behavior, popular payment system, and so on. It felt like that most of the shops there were selling either berries, vegetables, or fish. However, I was lucky enough to find one unique small stand selling something that didn't look familiar to me, and the vendor talked to me with a smile. He asked me, like, hey, would you like to try reindeer meatball? And I was like, what is it again? And he said, reindeer meatball. Okay, sure. And I tried it and it was so gamey. I was a bit shocked to know that reindeer could be something I might not like. I had to take my water bottle out of my backpack to remove the taste from my mouth. At that point, I thought reindeer meatball was a common dish in Finnish households, but later I realized it's actually not. They don't often eat it, at least in the southern and central part of Finland where I have lived. And I have to tell you that reindeer meat itself is tasty. I lived in the northern part of Finland for four months for winter work and I have had reindeer steak there. And it was so delicious. Maybe Finland wanted to welcome me by giving the unique food in the beginning. On the next day, I moved in my student apartment and met my student tutor and other students in the same program. We went to one of the student restaurants for lunch. While lining up at the lunch buffet, I was observing the restaurant's atmosphere and the menu. My first question was, how come there are so many dishes using potatoes here? Sometimes in student restaurants, there were, for example, mashed potatoes, boiled potatoes, and baked potatoes at the same time. Potatoes were literally everywhere. <laughs> I like potatoes in general, but if there are three different kinds of potatoes at the same time, it's a bit too much. In Finnish, potato is peruna, so you might see several different peruna on the menu list, such as peruna mousse, peruna laatikko, uni peruna, etc. I found it very interesting and then learned that potatoes for Finns is like rice for Japanese. One of my Finnish friends say that he doesn't see dishes with the potatoes as proper meals. When I make tweets about potatoes on Twitter, I usually get many reactions and comments from Finnish people. For example, when I wrote, I want to be able to choose a suitable type of potatoes depending on the meal as a person living in Finland, many people kindly told me tips and informative information. Also, when I wrote something like, I'm kinda looking forward to tasting early potato I bought today with a picture. I got many comments saying like, oh no, those are Swedish potatoes, use Finnish ones. This is also showing how Finns love potatoes. This is not really like culture shock, but I want to share. In student restaurants in Finland, there's usually a salad bar and I like the idea a lot because it's healthy. However, Salad dressings there were garlic taste, tomatoes one, and mustard one, and they tasted quite weird to me in the beginning. 
it took me a couple months to get used to it, but back then it tasted so unique and I thought it didn't go well with salad. So I realized that I brought sesame dressing from Japan. So what I did was that every day I took it to school with me and during the lunch time I took it out from my backpack and put it on a salad. My lunch companies were usually laughing or giving me a skeptical expression like what's he doing? Let's go back to my first experience of the Finnish student restaurant. After we all finished eating, our international tutor took a small box full of black candies out of her backpack. She gave the candy to each of us saying, dessert time, with a challenging smile. I immediately recognized it since I had read about the black candy salmiaki in a guidebook and somewhere online before moving to Finland and it was usually described like worst candy in the world or unique souvenir from Finland. Of course I tried it out of curiosity but I wasn't able to finish it. It tasted really 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 bad <laughs> and the taste was like the mix of some medicine, tire, and the rubber. That was a moment when my ongoing challenge to come to like salmiaki started and salmiaki has been bringing me some fun opportunities so far. I'm now planning to make another video featuring my salmiaki experience so I'm not going into deep detail about salmiaki in this video. Let's now move on to another unique Finnish delicacy, manmi. Mammi is a traditional Finnish dessert eaten around Easter and the main ingredient is rye. As you can see, it looks quite gross. <laughs> One day before Easter holidays, I was in the communal sauna of the student apartment with my Finnish friend. He told me about Mammi and after sauna we decided to eat it at his place. He served it with milk and it tasted like a mix of bread and beer and I didn't really like it and I didn't eat it again for a while. However, after two years, my friend Elsa recommended me to try it again and for some reason I found it tasty. I don't know what happened to my sense of taste. Maybe it is becoming more Finnish, but anyway, I like it now and I'm proud of it. I especially like eating it with milk or vanilla sauce. Next food is blood sausage called Mustamakkara. After I finished all of the courses from my master's degree program, I got a summer job in Tampere, which is the third biggest city in Finland. A specialty of Tampere is a Mustamakkara, which is a type of Finnish blood sausage traditionally eaten with lingonberry jam and for some reason it is common to eat it with milk among the local people there. My first impression was that it also looked a bit gross to be honest, as you can see. And I wasn't a fan of the taste of blood sausage in the beginning. However, just like I came to like Mammi at some point after I tried it several times, I got used to it little by little and now I actually like this blood sausage as well. One time when we had clients visiting from Japan, we took them to a blood sausage stand in a market for lunch and they were all shocked and didn't really like it. That was probably the funniest business lunch scenes I've ever seen. Another point I was a bit surprised regarding food was that there are some differences in eating habits. In Finland, it's quite common even among people who live alone to cook a big amount of meals, for instance, macaron casserole or macaron latico in Finnish in the oven and eat it for three days in a row. I guess that is a common way not only in Finland but also in other Western countries and that would be a good way to save some money and time. I might eat leftover from the night before but I prefer cooking for one or two meals and eat different stuff every day. Also, another thing I should mention here is coffee break. Both in companies and schools, there's usually break time to have coffee or tea with other workmates or classmates. It's not just about enjoying coffee but more about socialization through coffee time. 
It was interesting to know how coffee plays a vital role in communication. When I visited my friend's place, he had a coffee machine even though he doesn't like coffee. He told me that when he has a visitor, they would expect to have coffee, so he bought it. So, these were food culture shock I got in Finland, even though some of them were not really like a big culture shock. I believe that knowing local food is knowing local culture, so it's nice to try it out regardless of whether it looks or smells good or bad. So, that was it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have some experience regarding food culture shock, I would be happy if you could share with me and other audience in the comment section. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.